When it comes to your weapon of choice for despill, there are many different options. Uh, here's a few besides despill madness. Um, there's AP despill, spill correct, spill to, to color, uh, L despill, which is Luma's uh, despill, and then uh, pixel fudger's uh, kill spill. Some of these uh, build off the back of other uh, tool sets out of inspiration of what other people did and wanted to improve upon them. Uh, some have their strengths and weaknesses in different areas. Uh, but today we're going to look at a very straightforward version of all of them, and that's the despilled color. So the war for the edge has been fought for many years, and uh, there are different ways to fight this war. Uh, first thing, it's whenever you're shooting on a green screen or a white screen, um, you're basically getting sort of like a flaring over or blending over whatever color it is, green or blue, uh, into the actual character's uh, fine hairs and on their skin. So what we're commonly doing in two different attack fronts is the first is dealing with the foreground and sort of putting, changing the color of the green screen and shifting it so that along the edge it matches to the color that corresponds to whatever color is there. So if this is like dark brown, we want to have dark brown color there in that transitionary alpha area. And again, we kind of do this the best we can around the character. And at the same time, we don't ignore the fact that the background has sort of like a uh, kind of mind of its own or, or uh, just an influence of its own. And that is the fact that you want to take the background and start to kind of move it in a little bit in the way that it, it in of itself will flare over, such as bright spots that might flare up the hair and kind of bleed into the hair. Um, and that's usually done through many techniques such as edge blending of the original footage or light wrapping and so forth. So it's really two different fronts we're kind of going at with. But this first one we're kind of talking about is just dealing with this edge along the actual um, edge itself. Again, this is edge despill, not core despill. The final sort of like uh, core despill is what you kind of put in the middle uh, in the, and it transitions to the edge despill, which maintains the skin tones and kind of just stays away from you know, changing her into whatever color you don't want her to be. After combining your edge and core mat, which we're not going to get into in this video, you can see that if we do a pre-malt, we get all this nasty green on this side. And again, it just doesn't match the background. What the background image is, is very important as, for instance, if it is a black background, it's going to be very hard to sort of shift these bright tones in the form of like the fact that the luminance is different to match, say, a pitch black background. Not to mention that her lighting is sort of like uh, basically dictating a very bright scene anyway, a very warm, dark, uh, bright scene. So we're using a typical composite here where we have a core mat and edge mat already built up, but we're going to use the core mat, which is sort of like an eroded version of a very sharp prime mat uh, capture. That's going to kind of keep the core in place and the outside will be key mixed with the edge despill. That's where we get to play with changing the edges dramatically, whereas the core is to hold on to the skin tones of her face. So let's go ahead and uh, start. And again, I usually use AP despill myself for this, but we're going to go ahead and just demonstrate the despill to color. So let's throw that in and we'll make our core with that. And again, you can see right here, we have the choice of the screen color. I can click here, hit shift control, and then I can take the target color, come over here and choose whatever color I think is the average color of the scene, which can help kind of keep us started. So some people use this as default and they'll copy and paste this over here. But, you know, I can kind of leave this uh, be and, or I could just kind of choose with shift control and alt, kind of like sample a range here and we can get like an average color, okay? That kind of suits both the bright and the white areas. So you can kind of take area that's bright and dark, kind of put that in there. And that's probably a good startup base. But the question is, you also want to come in here and take a look and see, have we kind of played with her skin tones at all? And to the for the most part, her skin tones are pretty solid. That doesn't mean that she doesn't have any despill on her face that we might have to deal with. So she might have like some greenish hue in here. Which in that case, you can come in here and take, for instance, the balance. And you can see if you want it to affect more of the red color, which would be your skin tone, you can start to take the balance if you want to kind of take the gain up. Now her skin tones are starting to change a little bit. So you got to be careful and kind of put that balance to where you can get it out. Uh, there are better tools for this uh, using, uh, you know, limiter masks such as uh, uh, AP despill, but we'll get into that later. But you can see we kind of got a good good round image here we look for shadows in here we might see more areas we might key mix in 
some, you know, despell, like for instance here, might you could see maybe a little bit more of the skin being affected here in the green. But in, in general, it's pretty good. And what I'll do is I'll just copy and paste this over here, just have kind of a starter for our despell the color. And this we're really worried about. We can go crazy with this, start affecting the background. We don't care about the center of what's happening to her. Um, it'll transition over from this key mix based on the core mat. So, so with this, we can start with this. And now I could just go ahead and copy paste this and come over here. Now I'm going to try to adjust the color to match for different areas here. So I will take the uh, screen color. Hold on Shift, Control, and Alt so I don't resample the sample. And I'll get like a nice brown color for the dark areas over here. And then you just start to key mix this in. You will have to animate these masks if the character is moving throughout your shot. And so I'll go ahead and put this here. And then we'll go ahead and put a roto and a blur. And we'll stick that in, such as that. And then we can come in here with that and start looking at where the skin kind of goes uh, dark. And you can see how even at this, you know, we're starting to see this here getting a bit weird. And we can start to see an introduction of artifacts. This is a JPEG, so that's probably where we're getting a lot of nasty artifacts. There's a lot of tools such as uh, Blur Min Max that can get rid of these type of things, depending on your footage. So again, you can see we can start to play with this, right? You can bring it in here. And the influence hasn't really grabbed a hold of everything, right? So. We can come in here and take the gain. The gain's gonna start to sort of you know, march its way into the skin as we sort of pull this up. But it's also gonna start pushing the character towards magenta, as you can see here. Blurry edges have an alternative to using gain, and that's the erode. You can see here for blurry edges, uh, eroding the despill mat is an alternative to increasing the gain. So if you wanna like push this stuff in here, but be a little bit limited in affecting the areas very close, you can turn this on and start to affect this you can see like it's it's highly, highly eroding here. It's not gonna work. You can also take the balance, like I said, pushing it lower values will attack more red, which would be her hair or skin tones. And then if you pull it the other direction, it's gonna start attacking green and blue. But in doing so, you're losing, you can see you're losing the despell. And blonde hair is very hard to hold on to as far as not having the hair go to brunette or, you know, go magenta. So it's kind of a hard place to do. And then fall off is the gamma, or sort of like if you imagine the blurry area between white and black on a mat, um, it either hardens or softens it. Uh, so you're kind of adding contrast or adding no contrast by increasing this and decreasing it. So this kind of adjusts the fall off of influence here, like so. This area right here, we might have to create an individual mask that's sort of white. So as we do this, you can do all types of things like actually add transitions like this as it comes around to the skin tone right here. You know, you might want to transition this. Uh, in this case, we'll probably want to leave this here, but even areas that are sort of bright okay, in the original footage, uh, you know, like for instance, maybe this area of white around here might be an issue. So now you can see, as we're doing this, if we kind of come to the final comp, you can see we're starting to affect different areas. So this is kind of staying very blue. This still has a very heavy sort of magenta uh, tint to it, so we can do certain you know workflows with that. But I'm just kind of showing you how to adjust all this. And you can see with this original color we did here, it's looking pretty good. So if I go ahead and come back to the final here and take the original despill, we can actually click on this little color wheel by holding control for the target, and we can start to bring up the brightness value to see how it's affecting that edge if we want to bring it up and down, okay? And you can keep doing this, and I, I just like to just take copy and paste and pull this right here, right? And then I just change the initial color to something else. Like for instance, this area right here, we might want to come in here and just sample this and kind of make the color a little bit more whitish like that or whatever. And then we can key mix that in by moving the old Bezier. And we can go ahead and you can animate, not only can you kind of like transition this area, but you can also animate the opacity of this on and off, okay? And you can also come back to your final result and see, see how it's looking. So I'll go ahead and turn this on and off. I think I have a bad mat here on this side. <laughs> so apologies, folks. I think I, I actually uh, have bad mats on this side and this side, but you can kind of see what I'm talking about here. It kind of helps brighten up that area. Um, 
So again, a very straightforward reality. If I were to disable these, you can see how what we have is an absolute mess, you know. But slowly but surely by working the edges, playing with these different values. And also, just to let you know, under despill mat, you have this despill output like this. And if you do decide to uh, play with, you know, the, uh, the erode here, you know, you can increase it, which again is an alternative to get, uh, gain as far as bleeding in. And then you can mix it in if you like.